Hello students. So today I welcome you in this first chapter of grade 8 rational numbers and we are going to solve the exercise 1.1. So be attentive during the solutions and try to understand each and every principle before you apply it. So let's start with the first question which says using the appropriate property solve the following question. The first part of the question is written on the board that is minus 2 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 5 plus 5 by 2 minus 3 by 5 multiplied by 1 by 6. What you need to do just spot the similar rational number as you can see 3 by 5 is here in the first term and 3 by 5 is here in the second term as well. So just keep them together. It means when you are taking them together you need to change the place of this particular term and you have to use the property commutative property. So by commutativity minus 2 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 5 is written here but at the second place we have kept this third term that is minus 3 by 5 multiplied by 1 by 6 and plus 5 by 2. After that 3 by 5 was common in both the terms so we have taken it common minus 2 by 3 minus 1 by 6 left in the bracket. Now we know by the Podmas rule we need to solve this at first. So we have taken LCM. The LCM of 3 and 6 would be 6. I hope you know that 3 2s are 6 and 6 1s are 6. The LCM would be 6 and 2 would be converted into 2 by 2 that is 4. Minus 4 minus 5 you would be getting minus 5 by 6. So 3 by 5 copied here minus 5 by 6 copied here and 5 by 2 is written as it is. When you will try to cancel out, you will find this numerator 3 to be cancelled out by this denominator 6. 3 1s are 3 and 3 2s are 6. This minus 5 will be cancelled out by this denominator of the first fraction, rational number and you would be getting minus 1. Minus 1 by 2 is written here. The rest portion 5 by 2 has been copied. As you can see, the denominator of both the rational numbers is same. You would be getting minus 1 plus 5 that is plus 4 divided by 2. And once you are dividing, you would be getting plus 2 as your answer. I hope you understood and now you do the B part by your own. Okay, students, let's move to the second question. And the second question says, write the additive inverse of each. Here I have taken the first three part and we will try to find out the additive inverse for each of the following. First thing, clear in your mind that additive inverse are similar in the figure but are different when it comes to sign. It means the number is positive, so the additive inverse is going to be negative. So firstly figure out whether the rational number is positive or negative. In the first case, you can simply see that 2 by 8 is in the positive form. And the additive inverse of 8 is going to be negative. So just mark minus 2 by 8 as your correct answer. Moving to the next, as you can see in the B part, it has a minus sign. One minus sign shows that 5 by 9 is in the negative form. So the additive inverse of minus 5 by 9 would be plus 5 by 9. If you are just writing 5 by 9, that is also considered as correct answer. Let's see the third part. It is minus, five by, minus 6 by minus 5. Can you tell whether it is positive or negative? Yes, you are right. This is exactly a positive rational number. Why? Because it got cancelled. These minus sign of 6 and 5 got cancelled and you got 6 by 5. So the additive inverse of minus 6 by minus 5 would be minus 6 by 5 which is negative in nature. I hope you understood and try to do the further question of this. Now the third question of your textbook which is verify that minus of minus x is equal to x for. So you will be getting some values of the variable it could be x y z anything so here the value of x is 11 by 5 and you need to divide your answer in two parts one part would be lhs that is left hand side and other part would be rhs that is right hand side firstly copy down the things which are on your left hand side so minus of minus x would be copied here what is the value of x? That is 11 by 5. So write minus 11 by 15. When minus and minus are being multiplied, you would be getting a plus sign. So that is 11 by 15 in your LHS part. Moving to the right hand side, 
you have x and the value of x is nothing but 11 by 15. As you can see, the value of LHS and RHS is equal. So we would be writing it as LHS is equal to RHS and it is verified. V-E-R-I-F-I-E-T. Verified. And that's it. Okay students, let's move to the question number 4 that is find the multiplicative inverse of the following. And I have taken here three different type of questions for this particular part. Minus 13. When you are going to solve the multiplicative inverse, keep this in your mind that now you don't have to see the sign of the international number. Now you have to interchange the numerator and denominator with each other. So how we will be doing? Minus 13 is written here. You could consider it as minus 13 by 1. And when you have to write its multiplicative inverse, that is minus 1 by 30. What I did, I just exchanged the numerator with its denominator and you got its multiplicative inverse. When it comes to some question like minus 5 by 8 multiplied by minus 3 by 7, do not jump into the multiplicative inverse directly. Firstly, try to solve it. So, as you can see, you cannot cancel out any number. All of these are mostly prime, just 8 is co-prime. So, what we will do, we will try to calculate it first. So, minus minus would be plus 5 threes are 15 divided by 7 eights are 56. So 15 by 56 is your rational number which is the question part. And when you have to write its multiplicative inverse, you will simply interchange the numerator with the denominator that is 56 divided by 15. Moving to the fifth part of the same question, minus 1 multiplied by minus 2 by 5 is written. So firstly solve this. Minus minus would be plus and this is 2 by 5. And when you have to write its multiplicative inverse, just interchange 5 and 2. That's it and it is your final answer. I hope it is clear that additive inverse and multiplicative inverse are different from each other and how. Now we have reached to the question number 5 and the question number 5 states that name the property under multiplication used in each. So you would be definitely getting a multiplication sign here and you just need to check whether the property used here is commutative, multiplicative identity or the associative property. So let's jump into our first part that is minus 4 by 5 multiplied by 1 okay, is equal to 1 multiplied by minus 4 by 5 is equal to minus 4 by 5. As you can see, if any rational number is multiplied by 1 or 1 is multiplied by any number, the rational number remains same in the answer. So we would be taking it as 1 is the multiplicative identity. If 1 is multiplied by any rational number or rational number is multiplied by 1, the answer remains the rational number itself. That is called the multiplicative identity. The second part, minus 13 by 17 multiplied by minus 2 by 7 is equal to minus 2 by 7 multiplied by minus 13 by 17. You can see the rational numbers are same and even the sign of the rational number is same. But their position have been exchanged and this exchanging of position is considered as commutative property and because the multiplicative sign is here the answer would be commutative property of multiplication. Third is minus 19 by 29 multiplied by minus 29 upon minus 19 and the answer is equal to 1. So the property used here would be multiplicative inverse because multiplicative inverse are those rational number which are reciprocal of the given rational number. And hence, the answer of the third part would be multiplicative inverse. Now let's see the question number 6 which is multiply 6 by 13 by the reciprocal of minus 7 by 16. So according to question, we need to multiply 6 by 13 by the reciprocal of minus 7 by 16. What is reciprocal? Reciprocal is same in sign but the values of the numerator and denominator exchange their place. So it is minus 16 by 7. So now you have to write the reciprocal of minus 7 by 16 that is 6 multiplied by 13 multiplied by minus 16 by 7. When you will be multiplying it you will be getting plus minus minus sign 16 6 are 96 and 13 7 are 91 and your answer is minus 96 divided by 91. And this Let's see the question number 7 that is tell what property allows you to compute. Compute means calculate 
1 by 3 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 4 by 3 in a bracket as 1 by 3 multiplied by 6 in a bracket multiplied by 4 by 3. So firstly, just write down the equation that is 1 upon 3 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 4 by 3 in a bracket. As it is equal, you could write 1 by 3 multiplied by 6 in a single bracket multiplied by 4 by 3. Now, have you noticed that only the group of 1 by 6 has been done in the RHS part, which is the group of 6 by multiplied by 4 by 14 in the LHS part. So, we can see that the group has been exchanged. And if the group of the rational number has been exchanged, here we have used the associative property. Associative property and the sign used here is of multiplication. So, we will write associative property of multiplication. I hope it is clear. If the plus sign would have been used here, you would have used the associative property of addition. Now let's move to the question number 8 which states, Is 8 by 9 the multiplicative inverse of minus 1, 1 by 8? Here 1 is the whole number and then 1 by 8 is given. So first we need to convert it into improper fraction that you have to keep in your mind. And what is the principle of this question? It is that if two numbers are multiplicative inverse, their product should be 1. So what we will do, we will simply keep our both the rational numbers here and we will multiply them. If the answer would be plus 1, they are multiplicative inverse. If it would be other than 1, then they would not. So minus 1 whole 1 by 8 we have written here multiplied by 8 by 9. 1 whole 1 by 8 is converted as minus 9 by 8 multiplied by 8 by 9. When you have cancelled out, you would be getting minus 1 here, 1 here, 1 here and 9, 1 here. After multiplying them, you would get minus 1. And what I said, the product should be 1. It means no. 8 by 9 is not the multiplicative inverse of minus 1 whole 1 by 8. I hope this is clear. And based on this similar concept, try to do question number 9 by your own, where you have to convert 0 0.3, which is a decimal number, into rational number. Now, let's move to the question number 10. That is, write... The rational number that does not have a reciprocal. So here you have to write a rational number which does not have a reciprocal of it. It means you are talking about 0 because 0 is the only rational number which cannot be written as 1 upon 0 or 17 upon 0 like that. So here the answer would be 0. The second is the rational number that are equal to their reciprocals. The numbers which are equal to their reciprocals. So here you would be taking 1 and minus 1. Why 1, 1 and minus 1? When you are writing 1 upon 1 and it's reciprocal, that would be 1. When you are writing minus 1 upon 1, it's reciprocal would be again minus 1. The third question is the rational number that is equal to its negative. So again, your answer is going to be 0. Because if you are writing plus 0 or minus 0, that doesn't differ. The answer is always 0. I hope this is clear to you. Okay, now we have almost reached to the end of this exercise. And the 11th and the last question of this exercise is fill in the blanks. Here your primary concepts would be checked. So be very attentive. 0 has dash reciprocal. We have seen in the question number 10 that 0 is the only rational number which has no reciprocal. So here you would be writing no. Okay. In the second part it is the numbers dash and dash are their own reciprocal. And this was again in question number 10. So it would be 1 and minus 1. Next is third part. The reciprocal of minus 5 is. I told you reciprocal are same in sign but the numerator and denominator get exchanged. So answer would be minus 1 upon 5. In fourth part, reciprocal of 1 by x where x is not equal to 0. Why have you written this x is not equal to 0? Because 0 cannot be written as a denominator as we know this we read in the question number 10. So the reciprocal of 1 by x is going to be x. The product of two rational numbers is always a dash. Yes, the product of two rational numbers is always a rational number which is again a property of rational number which is called the closure property. Okay. The sixth part is the reciprocal of positive rational number is. I told you they do not follow the sign. So it means the reciprocal of the two positive rational number is going to be positive itself. 
I hope this exercise helped you to revise your all the concept which you studied in this chapter. Now students, I'm going to share the solutions of exercise 1.2 with you. So let's see what it is. Question number one is represent these numbers on the number line. So you have one rational number 7 by 4 to be represented on the number line. What you need to see first, what is the denominator and what is the relation between the numerator and denominator. As you can see that 7 is approx 2 times more than 4. So you need to keep 0, 1 and 2 on your number line. Then how many parts you would be doing? Here, the denominator is 4, so you need 4 parts in each case. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay? Now mark 1 by 4, 2 by 4, 3 by 4 and this is 4 by 4, that is 1. 5 by 4, 6 by 4, 7 by 4 and again 8 by 4 is equal to 2 only. And here is your answer. 7 by 4 is the required rational number which you wanted and you got your answer. Similarly, try to do B part of this particular question. I hope you understood the first question properly and you tried to do question 2 by your own because that also has to be depicted on the number line. So let's move to the question number 3 that is write 5 rational numbers which are smaller than 2. So you know that 2 is an integer, the positive integer. And all the integers are called num rational numbers. So less than 2 you could take minus 1. You can also take 0. You could take 1. You could take minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Why? Because the all integers have 1 in their denominator. And hence they all are called the rational numbers. I hope this is clear. And now let's do the question number 4 which says find 10 rational numbers between minus 2 by 5 and 1 by 2. As you can see that one rational number is negative and another one is the positive one. So what you need to do firstly look at their denominators. They are different. They need to be similar when you need to find out numbers between them. So take the LCM you would be getting 5 twos are 10 as the LCM. So make the denominator equal, you would be getting minus 4 by 10 and 5 by 10. This is minus 4 by 10 and this is 5 by 10. Now, if you will try to write the numbers between minus 4 by 10 and 5 by 10, you would only get 8 rational numbers. And that is why use the method which is multiply the numerator and denominator of both the rational number by 10 plus 1 is equal to 11. Why I have taken 10 plus 1? Because I need to find out 10 rational numbers. If I need to find out 9 rational numbers, I would take 10 to be multiplied. If I have 11 rational numbers, I would have taken 11 plus 1, 12 to be multiplied. So after multiplying 11 on the numerator and denominator of both the rational numbers, I got minus 44 by 110 and 55 by 110. And now I have plenty of rational numbers to write between them. So I got minus 43 by 110, minus 42 by 110 and so on till 54 by 110. See this, I have not taken minus 44 by 110 and 55 upon 110. The reason is we need to find out the rational numbers between them. So we cannot include the extreme parts of it. Now I have explained your question number 4 and based on this you need to do question number 5 and 7 by your own and question number 3 will help you to do question number 5. I hope this is clear. If there is any query feel free to ask. We are always there to help you. Thank you.